I believe succession sowing is the most underrated tool of a good gardener. Succession sowing is going to open your harvest window immensely. It's going to increase your productivity. And it's going to make sure that what you're growing actually reflects what you want to be eating in your kitchen. Succession sowing is pretty simple. It's just staggering our planting dates to make sure that we get a wider harvest window. As a northern gardener, I know all too well that Many of us get really excited in the spring as soon as that last frost pass. We go out, we plant the entire garden one time, and then in two months we're left scratching our heads like, oh, is it over already? That was quick. Um, so succession sowing is going to help us to really open up that window. Another reason I love succession sowing is it does increase the yield that you have in your garden because you're really never wasting any time with a plant that's dead and taking up space. You're pulling it out and you're putting something productive right in its place. So we're increasing our yield. Finally, the reason I love succession sowing is that it really can be tailored to our culinary needs. P.S. Every gardener in every climate can do some level of succession sowing. If you're way far up north, you might think that you can only plant right as soon as that frost pass, and that's about it. No, no. Actually, um, way super far up north in northern Maine, Elliot Coleman is succession sowing to have a harvest all year round. He's doing four season gardening, so it's totally possible way up north. Um, down south, a lot of us think it might get too hot for us to sow certain things. No, no. We have things like longevity spinach and sweet potato and callaloo amaranth and hot peppers that we can get in later in the season, even when it gets excruciatingly hot out. So it doesn't matter if you're way up here north, way down south, succession planting is for you. If you are the organized type, you can get your information together and make a nice planting calendar. I do think it's really worth the effort. So we're just going to compile some key information before we make our plan. So figure these things out. First, when can you sow crops depending on your area? Um, you can figure this out actually by Googling a month by month planting calendar for your state because you might not know most universities by state will have a gardener's planting calendar by month, which will basically let you know when you can start and stop planting lettuce, peppers, tomatoes. Um, and this is tried and true information. Someone has already tried and failed or tried and succeeded and taken their notes and made them available to you. The other great thing about those charts is they're usually broken down by micro regions. So you can find information for coastal California and high desert California and everywhere in between. Just look it up on the internet. It's actually incredible information. Also, don't forget to reach out to your local master gardeners organization because they too will have some really great planting calendars for you. Also, if you go on the Rare Seeds website, we've got the Clyde's Garden Planner, and that is about the size of an index card. It's got this incredible chart for spring on one side, fall on the other, and it's going to tell you when you can sow certain crops depending on your region and the time of year. It's super handy, and it's a great cheat sheet. Finally, just check the back of that seed packet. You're going to find some really essential information like whether a crop is early maturing, late to mature, or whether it's got days to maturity that are fairly tried and true. So you can find that information in the back of your seed packet and add it into the mix when you're determining when you're going to plant your crops. Okay, so maybe you don't want to put in the effort of making a calendar and writing it out. That's fine. You can do the pull and plant method. What's the pull and plant method? It's pretty simple. Basically, you come out to your garden, you realize that your lettuces have bolted and you go, oh, you're gone, Psh, toss it. Then you're gonna just dig up the soil, get it a little bit aerated, maybe add a little compost, or organic fertilizer in there to really refresh things and get another crop in its place. You might direct sow some seeds. Perhaps you have some little starts that you've already got ready to go on deck to plant in the ground. And one tip that's really important with the pull and plant method is change plant families when you replace a plant. So if you pull out a brassica like kale, make sure that you don't go putting Brussels sprouts in its place because pest pressure, disease pressure has built up in, in that place in the garden from your previous planting. So switch it up with the plant family. Pull out a kale, put in a tomato. Super important, make sure to keep the planting area cool. When we get into the second and third and fourth 
sowings of the season, even in a northern climate, the soil's going to be pretty warm. It might even be too warm for good germination. So we're going to employ a few tips and tricks to lower the temperature of that soil, increase the moisture so that the germination stays high and the plants stay healthy and happy. So one thing is using a little bit of drip irrigation. That's super helpful. Drip irrigation is going to keep your soil consistently moist so that you have better germination. As the summer gets hotter, your seeds are gonna dry out faster and easier. So make some consistent irrigation in your garden. And another step is plant your seeds twice as deep in the summertime because the soil is a little cooler the farther down you go. So um, in the spring, you're gonna plant things, say a half inch, you're gonna go for an inch during the summer because it's gonna be a little bit cooler down there. It's gonna stay a little bit more moist. So plant a little deeper, keep that soil moist. Finally, we're going to utilize our microclimates in the garden. So if we've got a big towering wall of corn, it's creating a lot of shade. So we're going to maybe in the shady space underneath the corn, plant something like a lettuce. Maybe a lettuce planted in June in your area would fry up if it was in full sun, but if it's in the shade of a nice wall of corn, it might actually thrive. So utilizing your little shady microclimates is a great way to extend how long you can sow something. Did you know that your plants actually grow a little bit slower when they're planted in the summer? It's true. Things that are planted in the early spring, in the spring, they're actually going to grow faster because the days are a, bit, a little bit longer. And after the summer solstice, which is about mid to late June, you're going to find that your plants actually grow a bit slower. So when we look at our days to maturity for a certain crop, we're actually going to add two weeks to that to compensate for that slower summer growth. Finally, Try things like small batch planting and techniques like interplanting. Small batch planting means I know that I don't need 20 plants of lettuce to come into maturity at all at the same time. So I might keep my lettuce patch empty, planting one to two plants every week, week and a half, and just planting along the block to make sure that I have lettuce at about the same, at about the desired rate rather than having all of it coming in at once. This really comes into play when we're talking about our excitement in the spring where we want to fill our entire garden all the way up. You may keep a little bit, a little patch empty or maybe put something super quick growing like a radish in there. That way you can make sure that you put some small batches so that we really get things going throughout the season that reflect what we actually, how we want to eat. Um, interplanting is really fascinating. That is where we plant different crops together and we utilize their space needs to get more out of the same time planting. So great example is carrots and radishes. So I will plant, so usually you'll plant an entire band of carrot seed and the carrot's going to take forever to germinate and forever to get growing and then you're going to have to thin them out because you sow them very thick and then you thin them out and it's a slow process and that carrot bed isn't going to really give you much for a long time so instead what we're going to do is we're going to take a little time it goes a little slower like this but you plant a couple carrots and then a radish a couple carrots and then a radish the radishes are going to grow much much faster than the carrots we're going to pull those radishes harvest them and that way your carrots can come in and grow into their space and they don't need as much thinning. So it takes a little more time at the beginning, but it does save space. That's really a trick for a smaller garden. You wouldn't want to do that on a huge scale because it'd be take forever to sow your seeds, but just a little gardener's trick. So that's it. Those are my tips for succession planting. I hope you guys have a wildly abundant season and check back for more garden tips and tricks. much for watching this video we sure love making them for you be sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss one